needle side. Um, the difference is that these butterflies are really big. In fact, I'm gonna pass these around so you guys can see them, touch them, play with them. But it's a 15 gauge needle. So um, you can, it, it's, the problem is that these guys may come to you post arrest. Um, in, in this particular case that brought it to our attention was a seizure patient. Um, so he's got these needles, hard needles, in his fistula or his graft, and he's there for six to eight hours. Um, so first thing we really need to do is the uh, provider needs to get hold of nephrology because nephrology is going to say, get them out or we need to get them up to dialysis to dialyze them. So important to know whether they need to come out and hurry and, you know, to, to not be used or whether we need to take them upstairs to get them dialyzed. Uh, in this case, there was nobody here from dialysis. Um, the dialysis nurse came in from home to pull the needles out. Mm -hmm. um, not a big deal, we, we can do that. It's not a big thing, but you guys are definitely capable of doing this task. It's at five to five to 10 minutes at, at the longest, if, unless it has some issue. And then that's also one of those things that would be physician oriented. You wanna make sure that they, they're aware if they're having a hard time getting it to stop. But these needles sitting in the skin, they're like a knife. I mean, they'll cut right through the side of it. Um, that bevel's so big that it, it, it works like a knife. And so if a man's seizing or, or moving around a lot, which is why you see him in dialysis laying so still, we, we try to get him, you know, situated and comfortable, not moving because that can poke, prod, and push right through the side of that, that, that access. Um, so the important we get these things out of there as soon as possible. Um, I'll let y'all look at that. You can push it around. It's, it's big. Um, but it's just a large butterfly. It's just a really big butterfly. Um, these are placed two needles uh, in a the site. There, there's going to be an arterial side and a venous side. So you'll see them with a, a red and a blue uh, clamp on them. Um, they'll be either in a line together or one side or the other of a graft. And uh, the, the only thing you need to take them out is two by twos and tape. I mean, that's all there is to it. And, you know, we, we, we joke about it, but the, the big secret to this is you just gotta hold pressure right over the side. Um, you know, a two by two folded up in this fashion, fashion. over a, over a needle site is, is all it takes. Um, and you know, it takes it anywhere from three to 10 minutes to mm -hmm. stop the bleeding. Yes. So because uh -huh. the uh, way a fistula is, it's, it's a, an arterialized vein. So arteries coming down the arm, it's then tied to the, to the vein. And in, the, in most people's cases, it's in the lower arm or the upper arm. Mm -hmm and you'll have uh, the artery feeding the vein and the vein becomes uh, arterialized. Mm -hmm. So that vessel is an arterial site now, okay? So when you pull those needles out, you have that big hole that you're just gonna hold that, that two by two right over the exact site where it's coming out, okay? Um, this is in, uh, we do have policy for it. Um, if you look back to the, the RDU policy, RDU 101, um, it's, it's the procedure for dialysis. It's everything that we do when we start them, when we take them off. If you want to look it up, that's the number for it, RD101. Um, second to the last page tells you, and it's pretty just easy, easy reading. It says, uh, with fistula needles, when they're not used, remove both cannulas from the patient's access site one at a time using a sterile two by two. Uh, gauze pad, apply moderate pressure to the access site until bleeding is stopped. Uh, all bleeding stops. Either you run out of blood or stop bleeding and clots. Oh, God. Um, so uh, they dress <laughs> at, at the end of that. Can I borrow your arm? Is that okay? Yes. I'm not going to stick you with so that. So just to be safe, should we just do the 10 minutes? I, be, sure. Um, I'm not weirdo. So, that would be like, I'll so, stop bleeding. Uh, oh, it, no, it's opened up again. That's a good question. That's a good question. So it, it's, it's a big needle site, um, but because they're stuck so often, it will stop bleeding fairly fairly rapidly. Uh -huh. uh, it's it's funny how that works. Uh -huh. This tape will not cooperate with me somewhere here. Yes, it builds blood up blood a blood really blood thick blood wall, blood and uh -huh. so when that wall is is punctured, it tends because it's arterialized, it becomes thicker, and uh -huh. so over time they get callous. Is a good and word for it, um, and that uh, you know it's uh -huh. it's one of those things that it stops faster than you think it would, um, but it will bleed profusely immediately after you pull it out. So you, you may hold it with some pressure um, and you know, you're obviously gloved and, and everything, but you're holding it with pressure and you, you might let up a little pressure on it and you'll see it start to fill that two by two. So you wanna have multiple two by twos, obviously. And then if it does, you can just reapply pressure to it, re, re put your pressure to it 
over that 10 minutes, usually, you know, between, like I said, some people stop within like three minutes easy. Mm -hmm. Other people you'll be holding for 15 minutes. So it's kind of variant on, on how long it takes to stop it and their access. Um, the newer the access, the more it probably bleeds or... Uh, funny that the newer accesses will stop fast stop faster sometimes oh, okay. and, and just it really is based on each individual patient okay. um we are always available if you guys have an issue with any of them if you have run into things then go hey I, that's not what i thought we were talking about call us i mean in the nephrologist has we, we can't give out our pager number because you it's for just for dialysis orders but if you call a nephrologist and he doesn't have the answer he'll call us and and if we need to come in we're definitely willing to it's not ever a big deal but it's if, if you guys have the skill and that patient really needs those needles out of there as you can see you don't want those pushing through the side and causing them some other issue on top of that because once that happens then you got other issues and this pressure sometimes doesn't stop that bleeding so if you lance the side here and there you're, you're working with more than just one hole mm -hmm. um, so one, you use sterile gloves or regular? just regular aseptic just regular. technique is all okay. this is yes um, these are sterile two by twos when you open them right just just because you want it to be clean when you're putting it right on that right. pressure site um, and then you know your dressing is going to be something of this nature. You're, you've got it just taped down like this. You can then let it go and see if it's going to bleed. Watch it for a minute. Um, we typically have then multiple tapes that we then will tape uh, you know, alongside it to just give it an added amount of pressure to cause it to be uh, you know, secured and not bleeding. So then you know, two or three pieces of tape usually will do the trick however long it's needed. Um, you'll have one obviously for each site. You'll have one below, above, or side to side, and uh, you'll hold them. You know, however long it takes, and then just watch it. It's not not something you have to stay there and be right on it. But if if uh, you know, we will even tell you in report when we're bringing patients back to you that you know he has needle sites. We've pulled his needles out. You know, be beware of those. You know, the, even the transport knows that to, to, you know, if they have an access arm that uh, when we're fun. when we're coming back with them. They may find it if there's blood in it and then you know the first thing you do for that is just put reapply pressure same spot you know just like any other bleeding spot mm -hmm. cut wound anything like that pressure directly apply to stop it, or at least stop that hold it for the moment um, you can push down hard enough to occlude the entire access don't really want to occlude it completely where the flow will not go because you can clot that arm if you hold it too long for too much pressure um, just applied pressure so that it stops bleeding. Um, if you put, I've seen people put four by fours over and over and then, and then wrap a curlex around it. it. It doesn't help it. It doesn't make it stop. The, the direct, if, if you know where that needle site is, in fact, you have this one bleeding right at this point. We're going to take this tape back off um, and we're going to hold real tightly here. We're going to have another two by two getting ready um, to look and see, you know, what's going on with this thing, you know, Oh, I see it's bleeding from down here instead of where you thought you had your pressure right over it. Mm -hmm. So you reapply your pressure and just start again. Hold again. Two, two to three to five minutes again, uh, maybe even as long as 10. Mm -hmm. But it will stop. It doesn't take long. It usually will stop fairly quickly. But those are the things that you kind of want to be aware of. But the largest concern we had was that the, these big needles are still in that patient's arm. And, and, and if they're here, sometimes they can be here for multiple hours. And if they're active at all or, you know, got to get up to the bathroom, the next thing you know, they push that needle through the side of that excess. And then you got all kinds of problems as to why, you know, oh, no, why, what else is going on? And, you know, not that, that, that that's the end of the world, but it is, you know, it's, it's, it's another injury on top of everything else that they're going through. So... So we had a patient come from a dialysis clinic because of her blood pressure, mm -hmm. but she still needed dialysis, but we, we still take it out. That's fine. Uh, you could, uh, that's why we would call the nephrologist. Okay. So um, that, the nephrologist wasn't helpful. If, if it was they a say, weekend. Yeah, well, if they say, no, we don't need to do dialysis, then you would take them out. Okay. Um, if they say, wait a minute, we're going to dialyze them because their potassium is still high or whatever's going on, they're too short of breath, whatever that issue is, um, okay. then they're going to call the nurse in to dialyze the patient. Um, you could take them out. It won't hurt anything. We can restick that patient when they come okay. upstairs. It's perfectly within, you know, the biggest thing is those needles are hard and straight and they're unforgiving if they decide to move about. And lots of times it'll be that one that's in, in the AC area that's a little too close to the AC or the, the, line, the needle itself is, is hanging down low like this. And then the next thing you know, they push and it's pushed, as you can see, it's pushed right up into the that access where you don't want it to be. Mm -hmm. I was gonna say, if we have that type of situation where, where they said, hey, leave it in, 
and it is at that PC, would it be beneficial if we just put like an arm board behind them? It, it could. Um, the biggest thing is you just want to make sure that they're, they, if, if they're with it and aware and, and able to maintain their sight, you know, then a lot of these guys are real prepared. They know. They'll even take them out mm -hmm. themselves. And, and they're, they're ready. They'll, at the center, lots of times you'll get to a point where you pull the needle and they take, they hold the site and then they, they wait their length of time and their tape is there and they apply their own tape and they do their own thing. But when they're here, they obviously were, they're under our care. So we got to make sure that we, we give them all the care that they would have normally gotten either place. So uh, some of them can hold it, some of them can't. Go ahead. Does it matter which one pulls out first? Or to go in it, or is it... it really doesn't. It comes to, uh, usually a lot of times we determine that on base where they, who was taped down first because then you're, you're disassembling tape from two sides. So if you got tape over tape, then obviously you're going to take off the one that's been taped it's down last. And then you, you, but either one is fine to do first. Uh, and you can do them one at a time. You know, you can take out both and hold both sides, but that's, that's up to the person taking them out. But, um, but best to just do one at a time and get it under control because two can get kind of to be a handful. You can open it if you want to lift them over. It's, it's and perfectly it, It's fine. like a butterfly safety wise, right? I don't want to. Yeah, so them. when they come out, um, these, these, these are what we have here as far as uh, safety uh, enclosures. So when this, this needle is in that arm, and we're getting ready to pull this needle out. This, this is another part of the, the, the safety device is that we push this up to where we can. And then what we can do is, is we'll put that pressure here over that needle site and hold that and then pull it right back into the, oh, into that needle. Works, okay. Yeah, so that. that's the, the, the <laughs> most appropriate, <laughs> that's the most appropriate way to, to pull that needle out and have it secured. So it's not as sharp out there in the wind. Um, but I know reality sometimes speaks to us where we have to pull it out and get control of this bleeding site. And then you can apply this, but best to get this thing where it's enclosed because it's a big needle and you know, it doesn't need to be just hanging around. I know sometimes they can get to where they're stuck in a bed crevice somewhere and you don't want to have that big needle somewhere where it could stick you accidentally. Questions? And I'm just you want to make sure it's clamped off before you Yeah, so this will usually be clamped, and they may even have syringes on the end of them sometimes when they come to you guys. Some, they'll, they'll flush them. Um, if they have time, they'll pull them before they come to you. You'll see that a lot, but sometimes the EMS will just say, let's go, and they'll take them, and so you guys will get them with everything they had going on there. So. We don't need to flush them, though. No need to flush them. Okay. Just, just okay. get them out of there. So that's a big deal. And uh, again, our, our number up on the unit, if we're there, you're welcome to call anytime. Uh, the nephrologist has our pager number if we need to come in to do it. If there's a, something that's just not right about it or you can't, can't get it figured out, call. It's perfectly okay to the questions there. And they'll give us your number. We'll call you. And if we can talk you through it, fine. If not, we'll, we'll come in and take care of it. It's not can you push meds through it if you had to? Uh, yes. Um, that is a big, big, big IV site. Okay, right. um, we, the blood flow through these is 400 cc's a minute to 450 yeah. cc's a minute. Wow. So it's a huge site. It's bigger, probably bigger. What's your level one uh, it's IVs? Nine. It's a nine. It's half that size. So you guys deal with lots bigger situations than this, but it's big enough you could get really good blood flows through it if you needed to push something through it emergently. Like you certainly could. Okay. Yeah, you certainly could. Okay. Um, Does it matter which if they had two? I mean, would you want to do Venus? Uh, Venus is where you want to push. Okay. It. Yeah, and if you had a choice. What I would pick, um, but. The, yeah, well, because the, <laughs> that's a good question, a good question because the arterial well, side, arterial. the well, arterial right. side it is really, uh, it's a misnomer saying arterial, but the, it's the pull side. That's the side that we pull the blood from to the machine, okay. the red side, mm -hmm. and the blue side is the return side. Mm -hmm. So we call that the venous side, mm -hmm. the return side. The return side is the best place to, to administer anything. Okay. Um, the red side, if you push through that, you're pushing against the flow. So if the needle's pointed this way, we would pull blood from that to go to the machine. Sometimes they're both pointed the same way, but they, they may be pointed either direction. So just be, be, be aware of that as well. They could be, one could be placed this way and one could be placed this way. And the arterial one is the one that's gonna be pointed towards the, right. the extremity. And then the, uh, arterial, the venous side is the one going back in. And blue and red typically means return and yeah. pull. Um, blue wire. Yes, so, but that, that's a good question, but you can push it all depends on policy on your end. Oh, well, is that yes. nursing scope or doc doctor? Well, I'm just asking, like, if they if they're coming like in an emergent situation, it's the only access we have. It's better than like an IO, in my yeah. opinion. But what's I don't think we have a policy. On that. 
probably don't. You okay. probably don't. Um, I didn't we, know. We do do you guys there. run into those situations in dialysis we where you them. have to? Yeah, we use them okay. all with, but we're under different yeah. that yeah. guideline. So yeah. uh, we're in, within the treatment, we can. That's the very best place is straight into the stream, and um, you know we have filtered line sets, so we, even blood is better given there. Everything is just okay. more controlled. Mm -hmm. And if you need blood, you can pull it right out of the line. It's really right. kind of wonderful at that point. But um, we've had a few people do that. Before. Yeah. <laughs> so um, it, with that, it would just be a question of whether the person that was running your code would be was okay with that. So mm -hmm. when Met Team comes, they're more than happy for us to use that because it's okay. a very, very reliable source of IV access. Mm -hmm. um, other questions? Anything else you might wonder about? Would MedStar use this? They, or they probably do IO. won't. They'll okay. probably go. They'll probably use their own sites. I think their policy probably reads not to use someone else's access. That's just how they'll come kind in. Kind of like so. ours. They want you guys want to pull out their access before you, you yeah. know, get yeah. very yeah. much farther into the treatment yeah. here. It's the same deal. It's kind of and even the call the nephrologist for us to use that. Lots of times they'll have us restick it just because mm. oh, okay. it's their access, their stick, and we want to make sure that it's okay. you know our sure. our stuff being protected by us, but. But it definitely needs to not stay in longer than it has to, just because mm -hmm. it's a big, big steel needle in your arm. Times two. Mm -hmm. Different yeah, yeah. So. All most of them will have the colors separation. They typically will. Um, this one, white? this one was a single needle. So, like, if you had one, we every box of big needles comes with extras mm -hmm. in case you, for instance, we stuck somebody and it went poorly. So then we, we have a free single needle and we'll okay. use that one. Um, but it, it, again, pulling them out, zero difference between the two as far as that goes. It's just when you're administering meds. If you right, were, that's if you what were I was thinking. If they that. were to come in. At that point, if you're not sure, don't, don't I wouldn't use, use it. it. Yeah. <laughs> That's just the honesty of it. I would be protect, sure. protecting, you know. Joel? That's a, yeah. a good, good question, though. Anything else? Any other concerns with dialysis? You guys are dealing with them, too, just as much as at least they, they come through you guys and come to us. And I mean, if you guys have questions or concerns for us, we'd, I'd be glad to hear them because... I just one other thing that we run into every now 